Welcome back to Two Marks and a Spark. Okay. Hi, I'm Ben. That's Uncle Russ. You may hey. notice us going a little faster than usual this week because we are on a bit of a time crunch. With that being said, hi, Russ. How are you? I'm good. Had a busy week. Hotter than hell today. Oh, it's hotter than the hubs of Hades. Yes. Um... So let's get right into this Raw show. Yeah. Russ, I think I'm going to stick to the Hulu version of Monday Night Raw from this day forward. I think that might be a good idea. I uh, slogged my way through the whole damn thing, more or less. I did fast forward a little bit during the Viking Rules match. Well, I did not watch the Viking Rules match in its entirety. I did watch enough of it to... You watched enough of it to know you didn't miss a damn thing. Exactly. Which, to be fair, with that match was about the first three and a half minutes, and you'd know, oh god, what am I looking at? It was goofy as hell. Well, anyway, one thing yeah. I I appreciated was they were in Atlanta this week, right? And Still they had arena. and they had Cody come out there start the show when the big baby face is from whatever town you're in it is always a good idea to send the guy out there right away right had his family if, ringside too because if you don't send the baby face out there right away the crowd will hijack that show yeah um and we saw it when punk was the top baby face and they would go to chicago if they don't send punk out there right away it's all night That's right when they go to boston with cena They'd chant Cena all night until John came out there. So I think they kind of just got it out of the way here. They're just like, let's just throw Cody out there. Right. Yep. And he didn't get to do much. No. Um, He was dressed like he was going to wrestle. Right. So I thought, is Raw actually starting with a match? What the hell am I watching? Did I accidentally turn on Dynamite? from like two years ago because you know cody coming out to start dynamite like two years ago wasn't right impossible i was like did i accidentally turn on a dynamite episode what the hell is going on wait the crowd's too big for it to be a dynamite from two years ago because they were still in the pandemic so here comes cody he's all doing the hometown babyface thing right he cuts a promo and he is just cutting the most Hometown babyface. Oh, that's right. He even loved his mother. Promo. Well, what a what a babyface. He, you know, you got a hometown loves mom. Family's there. This guy is as clean as a whistle. Uh they they did start chanting Cody's mom's name, though I don't remember what it was at one point. It was very quiet, but you could definitely hear it, especially on the Hulu version. Um. Uh, they were chanting Cody's mom's name at one point. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did not notice that. It was very quiet. Uh, Cody goes on to describe his uh, relationship with Brock Lesnar in two words, hard times. Hard times, baby. I mean... Okay, this is a good promo. Where it gets kind of messy is when he goes to leave, they hit Brock's music. Brock doesn't come out. Yep. And I was thinking, oh, okay. Then they did that two more times. And then Brock came out and yep. uh, absolutely murdered Cody Rhodes in front of his mother. Right. Trying to make his mama cry. What an asshole. Um, if you have not realized this yet, Brock Lesnar is a heel. Yes, he is. And then he said something that I'm sure went over really well backstage. Challenge accepted. I'll see you at SummerSlam, bitch. Right. I'm sure that went over really well when he got to the back. Yeah. Well, that falls within PG, doesn't it, bitch? Yes, but WWE still does not like you saying it. Right. 
It's one of those things that falls within PG that WWE just does not like. That's right. But, you know, there's a difference between PG 1980 and PG 2023. Well, don't tell Vincent Kennedy McMahon that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of variation in family entertainment. What if you got a really weird ass family, you know? Well, speaking of weird ass families, Gunther versus Matt Riddle. Hey, you know, they had a good match at Money in the Bank, but I thought this one was even better. I know I, 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 I like to rag on Matt Riddle for the you for the speedos and being barefoot and all that. But him and Gunther really work well together. Gunther and him know how to bring out the best of each other. And I enjoyed this, even though it didn't last long enough. They've worked each other on multiple continents. They know what they're doing in there. This was a good match, not long enough. Gunther won. Seems like Gunther we're had a post match promo. He said that you are very fortunate that one day in your pathetic, miserable lives, you got to see me. <laughs> which, which is I very, love. That was great. Which is just he is an old fashioned heel and fantastic. Yeah, and uh, challenges Drew McIntyre. I believe for SummerSlam. That's going to be a good one. We one then get event. what has been one of the better women's angles I've seen on this show in months. Uh, Jackie Redman is in the back. Right. I'm starting to like Jackie. I think she's okay. I'm getting to the point where I can actually remember her name now. Uh, so she's must have been around for a little while. Is the only reason you have me as a host so I remember the stupid interviewers' names? Well, you, you know, I always remember my brother Byron, you know? You call him Brian about three weeks out of six. Well, you know, we're close enough friends that I can get away with that. He knows I'm just joshing him. Well, anyway, uh, Byron should have lost my job in 2010, Saxton aside. Uh Jackie's in the back with uh, Raquel and Liv. Uh, basic babyface promo until Rhea comes over and Rhea beats the piss out of them. Rhea's just going on strong. She's just walking up on everybody backstage and basically telling them either to fuck off or go away or I'm going to kick your ass. Everybody. Or some semblance of all three. Yeah. And so she beat, she headbutts Liv Morgan. That looked like a shoot. I was like, holy fuck. Liv gets up to try to fight back. Rhea stepped on her bad arm. Uh, Rhea also kind of undercut kicked uh, Raquel. Raquel had a bad leg. So. Raquel just being a big bully here. Rhea is just beating the shit out of everyone. I mean, Rhea, that's what I meant. I, Rhea's just being a big bully, I meant to say. Uh, we get a Judgment Day promo um, yep. where about half of what they said actually ended up happening. They said Dominic Mysterio would become NXT North American champion. I yeah. didn't watch it, but he did win the NXT North American title, goddammit. Yep. I, do, I do think it would have been funnier and it would have gotten him even more nuclear heat if he would have, like, somehow conned Seth Rollins into a World Heavyweight title match and won the title. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Mm hmm Can you imagine the nuclear heat that would have happened the next night on Raw? Well, sure. If Dominic Mysterio would have won the World Heavyweight title? Yeah, I don't think they're going to do that yet. Although he is a pretty good heel, in my opinion. He would have nuclear heat. Yeah. And it would not he's be. All right. He's already white hot. Well, anyway, we get a Judgment Day promo and they get cut off by Kevin and Sammy and that gets made for the main event that it will be a tag team title match. Um, We get a goofy Adam Pierce segment where the trainer tells him she can probably compete but probably shouldn't mm -hmm. and then we go to the Sonya Deville Chelsea Green Raquel live thing 
This was too damn short a match because I actually thought yeah. the match was pretty damn good. Yes. Um, these four women can work. You know, pe- people forget how good Sonya Deville is in the ring. Yeah. And Chelsea Green has always been good in the ring, and Raquel and Liv are really good. And these four said, fuck, we only got five minutes. Okay, let's do as much crazy fucking shit as we can for five minutes. And this was also a very technical match, especially when Sonia and Raquel were in there. Um, Sonia had Raquel in a one leg Boston Crab for about a minute. Uh, and Raquel yeah. just did not tap. And it took an unprettier and a knee to the head to finally pin Liv in about five minutes. We do have new women's tag team champions. I thought this was one of the better women's tag matches, even though it wasn't long enough. Yeah, it was way too short. I like the outcome of it. Seemed to be like it will, if they're going in the right direction. People do not, people on the internet do not like the fact that Sonya and Chelsea won. And I'm like, okay, why not? Is it because we like Liv or is it because you don't like Sonya and Chelsea? Because if you like Liv, you should be fine with this considering what they do later in the show. Yeah, I like all four of them. Again, considering what they do later in this show, nobody should be mad. I agree. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Now, if they don't do the follow-up angle later in the main event, okay, sure, be mad. But they they do a follow-up angle. It was fine. We get a sit-down interview with Seth Rollins. I'll be honest, I kind of didn't watch this. Uh, speaking of things I didn't watch, the Vikings rules match, I heard this was god-awful. It was awful. Just skip right ahead. Uh, we had Shayna Baszler versus Nikki Cross. This was over before it started. Right. This led to a Ronda promo. Yeah, that was so exciting to hear Ronda Rousey doing a promo. Boy, it made my night. I think she thinks she's Stone Cold Steve Austin. She's definitely not. She's got zero charisma with the crowd. I mean, none. She's got zero anything. She's got go away heat. Uh, we had a Ms. TV thing with Becky Lynch. I actually thought this was one of the best segments on the show. Uh, well, for the Miz, it wasn't bad. Well, because the Miz shut the, the fuck out. up. She didn't take long before she started throwing shit out. Well, she kind of did what I think me and you would do if we were on a show like that. Got in the Miz's Just face. The case, bring out the bad guy. Let's go. All right. She basically wanted nothing to do with Miz. I mean, she was not having it with him. Mm-hmm. And he sold it like a million bucks. Trish and Zoe come out. Yep. And uh, Becky basically goats Trish into a rematch. And I think that's probably the one Becky wins, and that's probably the end of that. But she's going to have to beat Zoe as well, so I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, Bronson Reed and Shinsuke Nakamura went to a DQ in about seven minutes. Yeah. They give give a lot of DQ finishes to uh, Bronson Reed here lately i think they're probably trying to keep him strong yeah um we finally get to the main event right kevin owens and Sami Zayn versus damian priest and dominic mysterio i almost said rhea ripley yeah i don't know why because all the interference might as well have been a three on two handicap match for as involved as Rhea was here. Yeah. Yeah, it was all right, but it wasn't nothing to get too excited about. The crowd about. was really into this. Right. Which made well, you care more. It made but, work better, but I was kind of like, let's get this over with. Nothing new and exciting and interesting is going to happen. But this was definitely better than the match last week. Yeah, I'll give you that. And uh, the crowd was really hot when Liv Morgan came out and started brawling with Rhea. I would have to imagine that that's probably where we're headed long-term is Rhea versus Liv. 
I oh, don't yeah. think Liv Morgan is going to beat Rhea Ripley. But they do have a long-term storyline with those two, so I won't be surprised if they fuck this up and pull the trigger. For the record, I'm a Liv Morgan fan, and even I don't think they should do that. So, yeah, you know, shut up. Uh, right. Uh, let's talk about Uncle Russ's comic talk. Yes, a new episode went up just within the last 12 hours or so. You can find it on Lock 22 Productions on YouTube. We'll be having a new show coming up probably Thursday or Friday. Got tons of old comic books for sale. If you like Iron Man, check in. If you like Spider-Man, check in. Got stuff from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. Uncle Russ's Comic Talk. Be there. Okay. A freaking square. Okay. Well, we do have AEW Dynamite. This was the yes. Blood and Guts episode, which I was. What, we have, what did we have? Three matches? Yes. And this show flew by. It was well paced, but that main event was something else, I'll tell you. That's one word for it. I hated it. Uh, we had Jungle Boy versus Hook. Right. For the FTW title. Um, now he doesn't want to be Jungle Boy anymore. Now he's uh, Jack Perry. Jack Perry, and he's showing him out in the desert, burying Jungle Boy and shit. Well, anyway, I was not a massive fan of this show, on the whole, but I did like this match. Uh, for the most part, mm -hmm. uh, there was some good work in this match. Jack ends up winning that pointless FTW title. Absolutely no one cares. Uh, we get another Adam Cole MJF segment. This one was also great. These two should never break up. I love these two. Please yeah. keep them together. Even if they're tweeners, just keep them together. Now, uh, I think, you know, in order to do that, they've got to turn Adam Cole heel. Or than, MJF babyface. I don't think that would work. I think it's too early for that. I think they Adam Cole ought to surprise everybody and turn bad. That would be better, in my opinion. He just turned babyface. Yeah. So he can just give him a big middle finger and really piss him off. So we had Dr. Britt Baker in a squash. Yes, against, uh, I forget. Some jobber. Uh, she won. We had Great. Chris Jericho on commentary for the next match, which was MJF and Adam Cole against Sammy Guevara and Daniel Garcia. Right. Finals for the uh, elimination, what you call it. I thought the pre-match stuff for this was fucking hilarious. Yeah, it was very funny. We had what can only be described as an air hump contest. Yeah, it was it was a goof. It was a comedy for a while. I was sports entertained. There you go. Sports entertainers. <laughs> and I well, was it was more entertaining than what was to come. That's for damn sure. This MJF Adam Cole versus Guevara and Garcia was very good. And uh MJF and Adam Cole actually won the tournament, so we are gonna get that tag title match. But they're yeah. doing it on collision of all th fucking things, which means it's going to do death of a number. Sure. Uh, Jericho tried to kind of be a good leader to Guevara and Garcia, and Guevara and Garcia basically told him to fuck off. Yeah. It looks to me like Jericho wants to go out as a face. Or they're going to put him. Or they're going to put him with Don Callis. Yeah, or, you know, it could be some big swerve, you know. Who knows? We did get the blood and guts match. This was horrible. I didn't think it was as bad as you did, but here's my thing. I don't like War Games matches. I don't either. Never did. Mass confusion and, and for this, like a monumentally dummy fan. Now, I do prefer them on free TV as opposed to pay-per-view. I, yeah. 
I would not have wanted to pay for this show. But um, in terms of War Games matches, this one was good. Not great. It was not boring, I will tell you that. It did not drag on forever, but it certainly could have been better. Kota Ibushi was fucking awesome. Um, it looked very healthy. Yeah, it's, it's Kota there's Ibushi. A, there's the thing. Now, you you give me your reaction to this. When he comes, uh, comes out, we've got all this mayhem going on all over the arena and all over the ring. And he comes in, and they got a big interest for it with music and pyro and lights and everything. I thought That's... that seems very, very bizarre to stop everything and look up there. That's just Tony being Tony. I can't really uh, I, explain I that. Think you kind of know what I mean. It just kind of it would have been better for him to run in and start kicking ass. Call it a conism, if you will. Uh, That's a good word for it. Good word. And the bed and nails. I mean, that's a fucking trick that I figured out as a kid before I even ever saw it in wrestling. You know, they used to do that in magic acts all the time. It's an illusion. It's a trick. And it didn't look credible to have these people being slammed onto this bed of nails and then not even having any blood when they came up. Well, AEW is trying to crack down on blood, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Which I think yeah there was a, that's right. That was in the news. There was a memo from, Tony Khan that basically said you can't do everything that John Moxley does every week. Might as well just put John Moxley in a fucking football helmet. Yeah. And pads. <laughs> but anyway, this ended, of course, with uh, being a five on three. Because and the Pat got pissed off and ran away. He got pissed off at uh, somebody. And oh, here, 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 here's the thing. I another thing I didn't get. You know, he had to grab the bolt cutters to get out. But yet we had people on top of the cage. We had people on the ramp. How did they get in and out? God damn it! I don't remember. I, I mean, it's just weird. And then he walks off, and then Don Callis grabs uh, Takeshita and says, "This doesn't look good. We're going to bail on these guys," and they leave. And then it, it, it ended exactly the way I thought it would with, with the, the five guys in the elite acting like total heels, but getting the cheers of baby faces. Didn't care for it. Didn't like it. Left a bad taste in my mouth. Well, I assure you they'll put the good taste back in in short order because it's AEW and that's kind of what they do. They'll leave yeah, a bad taste right. in your mouth. They'll leave a bad taste in your mouth and fix it like a week later. Uh, this SmackDown show that was on FS1, totally forgettable show. Right. I think I think it, they said it was the highest rated show they've done on FS1. And that's probably because of the Bloodline storyline. But we didn't get a lot of advancement in the storyline, did we? They saved it all for the last 15 minutes. So the yeah. reason that this is on FS1 and they're probably going to be on FS1 multiple more times. Because of Major League Baseball, I think. No. The Women's World the FIFA Women's World Cup is going on right now. So okay. they can't I know this is going to sound crazy. But it doesn't matter how hot wrestling gets. You're not outdrawing FIFA. You're No. You're just not doing it. Well, that's a worldwide audience there. Yeah, you're you're not beating FIFA. Right. Um because there's more soccer fans than there are wrestling fans. I happen to be both. And I will tell you, the US absolutely clobbered Vietnam on Friday, three to nothing. While this uh yeah. SmackDown show was going on. Okay. Yeah, well then uh um, they said it was the biggest one on FS1, but I'm sure it's much smaller than they usually get. Which is maybe why they didn't uh, pack a lot into this show, because they knew it would be underrated, and then they could pick up more next week. Who knows? They very This very much had the feeling of, we're on the wrong network. We need to get this over with. Please kill us. Yeah. At any rate. We finally get to 
SmackDown, and this show was fine. Uh, the four way between Rey Mysterio, LA Knight, Cameron Grimes, and Sheamus. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, LA Knight again loses <laughs> again. But it, it's not hurting him at this point. He's still over. I mean, I think... he's still over now. It's almost like a like a running gag. Yeah. You know what it kind of reminds me of? What's do that? you do you remember when three man band was around? Yes. And these and these guys were losing all the time. Right. But the crowd just loved all three of them for some reason. Like they had a following. It was because of their shtick. I get it. But do you remember that? Because like they weren't not over. Like three man band, people forget three man band was kind of over for a while. Yes, they were. Well, anyway, Rey Mysterio won. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Uh, we're getting Mysterio versus Santos Escobar. They're both in the LWO. Right. I don't know what the hell they're going to do with that. Mysterio, they might just do a finger poke a doom spot next week, and I wouldn't be that stunned. Oh, yeah, that would that would not go over good. It wouldn't go over good, but... <sighs> It is this company, so I right. it wouldn't shock me, really. Uh, we had Charlotte versus EO Sky. Yes. This was a very good match, actually. EO Sky looks really good. Um, it was clunky, but uh, EO Sky, EO Sky is so fucking good. Yeah, I hear you. Anyway, Charlotte won. Yeah. They are following the let's beat whoever wins money in the bank into the ground principle. There you go. Um, and I guess Charlotte is technically supposed to be a baby face now. Yeah. I never was a baby face ever. Uh, I never even bought her as a baby face when she was in NXT. Right. She's just born to be a heel. She's a flair. Come on. She's got to be a bad guy. This has to be. Well, yeah. We had a Dominic Mysterio interview. Shawn Michaels shows up out of nowhere and makes a match between him and Butch after Butch cuts the interview off. Why is Dominic Mysterio on SmackDown? Uh, yeah. But the NXT champion, Carmelo Hayes, was here too, like the whole night. Um, Brand split, that's why. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. There was a segment earlier in the show to set this up, but we had Escobar versus Theory in a non-title match. They are clearly pushing the LWO in the Santos Escobar. Yeah. And I really like Santos. He's clearly better than Austin Theory. And Santos like beats both. Santos beats Austin Theory. I do not like Austin Theory at all. Uh I am done with him. Okay. But uh yeah, Escobar won. And Theory is probably dropping that U.S. title probably to Santos Escobar at this point. I would think so. And, uh, yeah, there's no way that doesn't happen at this point. Um, the main event of this show was Dominic Mysterio versus Butch. Right. Meh. What did you expect? A longer match? Yeah. <laughs> but you got to remember, they got allow they got allow our hour and a half for the ring entrances and shit. You know, yeah, it could have been better, but overall, the show wasn't that memorable, was it? I mean, I really liked the tribal court stuff or the tribal, uh, the like agreement of the rules of engagement segment. I thought that was really well done. And I well, looked it up. Roman Reigns was there. Everything he does looks good. Sounds good. I mean, Roman does know what he's doing, doesn't he? Seems to be. Seems it to would be. seem to me that Roman Reigns is pretty good at this wrestling stuff. But yeah. what I don't understand 
is we're going to go through. Jay Uso is not beating Roman, right? Probably not. Am I crazy? Probably not. Am I crazy, or is Jey Uso just not beating Roman Reigns? I can't. I don't think they should do that, but you never know. I think they should come real close, have a hell of a match. But I think I Jay should beat Roman. It just, but... it just depends on what Roman wants to do. You know, maybe he wants to go home for a while. Yeah, I don't know. I. I think Jay should beat Roman at some point, but not here. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I I don't know. I think Jay should beat Roman. I don't know if they're going to do it at SummerSlam. I think he should. I don't think they will. Uh, I think they're too scared. But if I was booking the damn thing, guess what? We'd see Jay getting over. Well, Jay is over. I mean, I mean, he'd be winning. I mean, he's already pinned him once. Why not? Yeah. They, they've already set it up. He pinned him in the fucking tag match. You're doing no, no him in the singles. Yeah. And you're going to say, oh, but what about Solo? Have Jimmy come back and take Solo out and then have Jay win the match. Solo's got, his, Solo's got a big feature ahead of him. I ain't worried about Solo. Even if. They just have Jay win the title just to drop it again. Just put the period at the end of this Roman thing for now. You can come back to this. Sure. Until Roman dies, pretty much. He doesn't even have to be wrestling for this stuff to work. Because he's not wrestling on TV anyway. Not very much. Very. I mean, he may, he, he he's smart that way. He shouldn't be wrestling unless he's getting the top money. They're they're booking him like a top heel. Well, that's what he is. He is the top heel. But they're booking him like a 1980s champion. But what they're doing differently here is they're actually telling a story every week without needing him to wrestle all the time. And you know what? He's going to last a lot longer from not wrestling all the time. And then we get AEW Collision. Collision. This was an interesting show. A little bit different episode of Collision than we're used to. I still don't like this fucking show. I didn't like this episode as much as the ones in the past. This didn't feel like it was that much different than a Wednesday night show. A lot of it depends on who's participating. By the way, what did you? One part that made me laugh out loud. I'm jump ahead a little bit, but when, when uh, Malachi Black just kicked the guy right in the head when he was the the uh, acclaimed guy when he was rapping, just boom! Did he let him finish the line right in the head, knocked his ass down? That was funny. Well. We're going to kind of blow through this collision show because nothing happened. Kind of the theme of the week and what we should title this episode is nothing happened. Not a lot. It sure was not. Nothing that memorable. Hey, by the way, you think we're done with Billy Gunn now? You know, I have been looking forward to the day that Billy Gunn retires for how long has Billy Gunn been wrestling? Uh, ever since he started, right? Smoking since, the, guns. since the day he walked into the wrestling business. Yeah. But I got to tell you, watching that collision show last night, if this is the end for him, what a sad way to go out. <laughs> yeah, really? Really? Like, I wouldn't... We, maybe he's going back to WWE and... That would be stupid of him because they're going to misuse him in some way. I mean, not like he'll get over on their TV. He won't. Uh, he's more over on. Well, the... You know, he could always be an agent or something like that, too. You know, he doesn't have to wrestle. He I mean, that's to... what he's been doing in AEW. I don't know. This is probably just an angle for him to turn heel. 
Could be. Uh, who knows? Who cares? Anyway, we get the CM Punk Ricky Starks thing to start the show. Speaking of right. turning heel, it would appear that Ricky has indeed done that. He did right. Kevin Nash at the start of the show. Got an right. absolute ass ton of pyro. And this was uh this was what like what you call a uh the crowd was really split, is what I mean. The crowd about half the crowd hated CM Punk and half of them loved him. Seems to be a common theme at most places they go. Well, anyway, this was a pretty good promo between these two. Yeah. Cage and Luchasaurus come out. And then, and I didn't know this until I looked it up. Darby Allen won the Royal Rampage the night before, whatever right. in the hell that means. That was just a battle. That was like a 20 man Royal Rumble using the two rings that were already set up from the War Games crap. It was very forgettable. I saw about five minutes of it and then fast forwarded and deleted it. I'm surprised you actually watch Rampage. Sometimes you- it fast forward, yeah. Are you feeling okay, Russ? You shouldn't watch Rampage. It's bad for your health. Oh, no. I better quit. It's kind of like, you know, drugs. Don't do drugs, kids. Well, we finally get to a fucking match on this goddamn show. Took a while. Yeah. After that's... about 18 minutes. Right. It felt like they started out with a lot of talking and setting up the main event. And I thought, am I watching fucking Monday Night Raw? Well, Jay White and Juice Robinson against Action Andretti and Darius Martin. This was a good match. Yes, it was. But I don't think it's possible to have a bad match with Jay White in the ring. (laughs) You put Jay White in a ring and it's probably going to end up being good. Right. Well, anyway, Bullet Club Gold win. Correct. That was very easy to see. That had to happen. Uh, They do a thing for Willow Nightingale talking about how she lost to Athena at Death Before Dishonor. Right. Um, Which I think was also Friday night. Correct. And what was interesting, and I didn't know this either, I had to look this up. Death Before Dishonor was main evented by Willow and Athena. They closed the show. All right. Um, which I thought was interesting because they also had Claudio and Pac for the ROH title on there. But the women closed the show. Interesting, yeah. Which is kind of a Death Before Dishonor thing. Uh, women closed the show. Yeah. Which, by the way, Women should be main eventing more than just like a pay per view or two a year. Yeah. Like you're telling me Britt Baker could have never main evented at an AEW pay per view. Oh, she maybe once. Yeah. And don't give me this. Oh, she main evented Dynamite. Yeah. Well, shut up. <laughs> it's not what I'm talking about. Right. You're talking about the PPV. Exactly. Uh, what we, the hell else happened on this show? I'm trying to remember. Uh, did you forget your notes again? Yes, well, I did. We, well, we had Miro versus Nick Camarado. Miro is so damn. Oh awesome. yes, Miro. That was good. Miro's ferocious, isn't he? Miro is a monster. He was, was so over with the crowd. My God, they ate up everything he did. Miro is a wonderful man, and he won this match pretty convincingly. We get a yeah. video package for FTR. That was good. And then we get a squash. The House of Black absolutely murder the acclaimed. Oh, that was brutal. That was yeah. brutal. And that's when we saw the Billy Gunn stuff. Mr. Daddy Ass taking off his boots and leaving them in the ring. And everybody like, I don't know what, they chanting a whole bunch of stuff. Please don't go. You still got it. They're chatting, you still got it. And I'm like, no, you don't. I'm thinking, you never did. Yeah. 
He never had it. Anyway, can't still have something you never had in the first place. Oh, there's been a lot, a whole lot worse. First time I saw him wrestle live, he was with the, this was back in the, like, 1994, and he was with the Smoking Guns. This is back when they still had Lex Luger in the company. By the way, I think his stuff with the Acclaimed is the most over Billy Gunn has ever been in his life. Well, maybe not. Maybe uh, he was over more with the New Age Outlaws, though, That was during the so-called Attitude Era. That's been a long time ago now. He was the worst worker in that group by a so. mile. Him or Road Dog, one of the two. Well, uh, he was even worse than uh, Rockabilly with the Honky Talk Man. Well, speaking of pretty bad, there was some pretty bad booking here. Uh, Ty Valkyrie versus Sky Blue. Yeah, I like them both, but this match didn't quite. uh... Ty won, and they're clearly, I think they're setting up for Sky to turn heel. And I think Madison Rain is going to come back, and that's when it's going to happen. Because Madison Rain is such a natural fucking heel. And if she's healthy and right. She's good at it. She's a good worker. I don't see, and people are going to bitch like, oh, Madison Rain, she was in TNA, da, 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 Do no. people forget that Madison Rain was like the highlight of some of those TNA shows? Only thing worth watching sometimes. Like the beautiful people was like actually good most of the time. Remember, I even like the dollhouse. Remember they did that with Marty Bell and uh, Jade? I do remember that. Bro, TNA, TNA gets a lot of shit because a lot of it was bad. But, like, there's some good shit in there. Yes. Pre-2010, there's some... There's a few nuggets among the turds. <laughs> By the way, yeah, I, I still don't like Vince Russo's booking, but I have met Vince Russo, and I do like him as a human. Yeah. I was going to say, I still don't like Vince Russo, but that's not true. I do like Vince Russo. Right. I just don't like his booking. By the way, I feel like I have to differentiate that because I feel like it has to be different. Like, if there was a booker that you didn't like their booking style, but you met him and thought they were the nicest person in the world, yeah. you wouldn't say you don't like them. You would say right. you don't like their booking, right? but you like them. Yep. And I feel the need to differentiate that with Vince only because I've met him right. and I really like the guy. Right. Well, you know, even even the people that we don't know, like when I criticize the young bucks, it's not personal. I don't hate them as human beings, you know, the way some people do. I don't wish them ill. What's I don't up, Jimmy wish C? them harm. You know, I'm not going to make fun of their, you know, their personal family's death. It's just that I don't like your wrestling. So that doesn't mean I hate you. Is that okay? Yeah, that's totally good with me. We had the most forgettable main event in AEW history. Uh, Ricky Starks and Christian Cage against Darby Allen and CM Punk. This match should have been great. It was not. Yeah, it was just... Why throw... What was the point of throwing this tag team together? I mean, it didn't make any sense the way they booked it because... Uh... Ricky Starks was an innocent bystander. Then CM Punk comes out, and then the other two come out and interact with CM Punk. And the next thing you know, Ricky Starks is just standing there, not saying nothing, and he's in a he's in a tag team match. Just for standing there, I guess. Tag he team didn't match. Make a sense to me. You're gonna we're gonna have a tag team match tonight, player. Yeah. Teddy Long. You know what? Teddy Long is not signed anywhere. Why has AEW not tried to give him a bucket of money yet? I don't know. That guy can really talk. He's really good. If they want an on-screen authority figure who doesn't have to be there every week. Because, like, if if they bring Teddy in, he doesn't have to be on TV all the time. And they would probably pay him a shitload of money. I just don't. They've got it. a lot of people there that are getting paid money that you hardly ever see on TV or you never see. But 
no, like they would probably not have to pay Teddy very much. And I know Teddy does like spot indie shows and stuff, but like for an AEW on screen authority figure, what do you think they need to do? Show up like once every two weeks? Sure. And like you could do pre recorded stuff for the you rest of the You don't want to do the um, Monday night manager thing, you know, or the general manager thing. You could do something more intelligent than that. Like a commissioner? Yeah. I think the commissioner has always worked better than the general manager. Yeah. Because they can play more down the middle. Now, Teddy's always kind of been a baby face, but. Well, that's about all we have to talk about yeah. here. Uh, go check out my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash bengames99. Yes. Uh, that's a new thing where I'm doing. I'm doing a whole bunch of live content because I think live content is really fun. We are getting a really nice little community over there. Go check it out. Good. Uh, what else would I was going to say? Shrewsbury. Shrewsworthy. Yeah, thank you. Worthy. Uh, Worthy, not Barry. Shrewsbury. Shrewsworthy. This week's episode did hit a bit of a delay because we had some scheduling conflicts. But other than that, that will do it for me and Uncle Russ. Uncle Russ, thanks for showing up for work this week. Yes. We look forward to seeing you again next week. We apologize for the shorter show this week. Uh, Again, after SummerSlam, there's probably going to be two to three shows a week. So more of me and Russ. Whether you like it or not, we don't give a shit. Well, we're doing good numbers, so clearly they want us back. But All right. Thank you, everybody. We will see you all next week. Next week, next week we're two weeks from SummerSlam. Right. I'm actually very excited for that show. It seems like they actually give a shit this year. Right. Um. I would imagine we're getting Seth Rollins. Well, we know we're getting Seth Rollins and Finn Balor again. Right. And, and I would imagine that match is going to be much longer. Because Bet it's you. because it's SummerSlam, so they're going to have more time. Absolutely. Because I don't know if you've noticed this about Triple H's booking, he would rather have less matches and give everything more time than so many matches that everything is about eight minutes. Right. Look, looking at you, VKM. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a good uh, analysis there. You know, where's the Kennedy, Kennedy McMahon is stuck in the past. Triple H would rather have a six match card and have everything go 35 minutes than. Yeah, I would too if they're good matches. Well, at any rate. All right. Hey, we'll see y'all next week. See you next week. As I like to say, Damon, play my music.